Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Brickeen, your host. Today's show, we don't have any guests because we're going to talk about part three of our LSU uh, preview going into fall for the football team. We're going to talk about linebackers today and defensive backs, long snappers, and kickers to finish out the preview and also talk about the hire of Ken, Kim Mulkey, Louisiana native, to LSU women's basketball from Baylor, which is incredible. A huge hire. We'll talk about that. Uh, talk about the NFL draft just a little bit. We'll, we'll cover it a little bit more on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to have a big-time guest on Wednesday that we'll, we'll have on that played football. Um, and we'll, we'll announce that guest on Wednesday when we – come back with our next show but want to go ahead and get started on LSU uh, linebackers uh, going into the fall this is probably the the, the position that has the biggest question mark let's face it uh, spring game the fans get to see one game again I always call it another scrimmage because that's what it is to the coaches and so and the players but the, the spring game is not going to show you everything okay uh, it will show you that they, they lack a lot of experience, so they don't have a lot of guys coming back at that position. Uh, Micah Bakersfield did not play in the spring game because he's sitting out uh, trying to get his grades up, I think, is with the last word and to get eligible to get back to his senior season. Hopefully Micah comes back for LSU because they need him. Um, they need his experience, and this would be his year to flourish, to blossom as a senior. Uh, the the uh, Micah's got a great career ahead of him if he can, like I said, get everything back to, to where he needs to be to get back into school and be eligible for his senior year. Uh, Micah has pro talent. I uh, saw him play at Evangel Christian uh, for four years and was a great player at Evangel Christian. Was the defensive player of the year in Class 5A uh, his senior year. Junior year was all state. Um uh, Locked a punt against Vanderbilt three years ago. Um, look, looked all world, you know, but uh, has a chance to really, really become a great player. You know, Michael's about six foot one, about 231 pounds, and can run a 4'6". You know, he's very athletic. So anyway, it's, it's very key to get Micah Bakersfield back. He didn't play in the spring game. Um, also, didn't play in the spring game was – now, Davitin Strong, they call him Buck Strong, a uh, junior college signing linebacker out of Mississippi. Uh, the Supposedly the best linebacker in Mississippi junior colleges, um, which produces a lot of talent. But Buck Strong is another guy that it's important that he becomes what they say he is, right? So because, again, this is a very thin position uh, overall with players. So, uh, first of all, got to get Micah Bakersfield back. Buck Strong's got to become that great player that they thought he can be from a junior college in Mississippi. He's about six foot, a little over six foot. They got him at six two. He's about two hundred thirty pounds. He's a he's a tank now. He's I haven't seen him play a lot of reps. Um, I'm interested to see what he's got in game um, action against other teams how good he is in this conference, the SEC. But, you know, Bug is really a, a Mike linebacker. He's the, he's the Mike linebacker that you want in the middle, plays the run. Um, you need a run stopper. And, and LSU had Phillips two years ago when they won the national championship in 19. Uh, they also had Patrick Queen who could play inside and outside. And those two guys really, it hurt that they went pro early and they didn't have them last year in 220. That changed the whole defense. So, Buck Strong's a Mike. Uh, Micah Bakersfield's an outside or a Mike linebacker, either one. And Damone Clark. You know, Damone's coming back for his senior year uh, from Southern Lab High School. Great kid. Super smart. Super talented. Uh, 6'3", 245, 250 pounds of muscle. Can run a 4'6", could probably run a 4'5'9 uh, when he runs his combine when all this is over. You're not gonna you're not gonna meet a better person, a better young man than Damone Clark. I mean, this kid he's almost a four O student in college, carried a four O GPA in high school. 
got a lot of flack for not having a good year last year. It was his first year to play, but he was out of position because the team lacked talent on defense. They had to put people and plug them in where they needed them. So I think Damone will have a great senior year. Some people talked about that he'd make a great buck linebacker, rush defensive end, possibly, but LSU can't afford to move him. Um, so Damone Clark is, a, is your Mike or outside linebacker. I think he's more of a, a Mike linebacker for college, uh, but he's also, you know, he could play the outside position. So those are the three guys that, <clears throat> that need to be around come fall. Damone Clark will be. They got to get Micah Bakersfield back. They got to get strong, uh, a bunch of reps in the fall and get him ready. Those could be his three starters. Um, the other players that'll compete, and they need to come a long way. Is Josh White is one from Houston, Texas, number ten. Uh, was defensive player of the year in in Houston, Texas, in class four A. Um, Josh White's about six foot tall, about 220. He's trying to get a little heavier. Um, he's fast. He just needs more reps, needs more experience. Uh, there's another linebacker that's that had a great game in the spring. He's a walk-on from Catholic High Baton Rouge, Jarrett Small. Everybody saw that on TV. Uh, or for all you're at the game like me. Uh, had 14 tackles in the spring game, which is really, really good. I don't care if you're a walk-on, scholarship player. I don't care what you are. 14 tackles is a lot of tackles. And had an interception. This kid can play. I mean, but he's – they list him at six foot tall. I think he's more like five, ten and a half, about 215. But he's a player. Um, so, I really think Jared Small will give LSU a lot of good reps this year. I think he was hurt last year. He didn't play a lot last year. He had an injury. Um, and those are, those are the main guys. And then – Anton Sampe, who, who was hurt last year, was an All-American signee from Virginia. Uh, didn't play a lot in 220 because he had injuries, but Anton Sampe showed a little bit to me in the spring game. Uh, six foot one, about 215, 220. Can run. Uh, really more of an outside guy right now than Mike because of his size. But probably more of a Mike linebacker once he fills out. Kind of that back Patrick Queen build. Um, and this is what's going to be the wild cards is when two guys show up for campus in the fall, one being Mike Jones Jr. from Clemson, who's a transfer, who was a starter for Clemson. He's a Tennessee native out of Nashville, Tennessee. Mike Jones runs a 4 five forty. He's six foot, six foot and a half, about 220, 225, super strong, super gifted, played at IMG Academy but he's from Nashville, Tennessee. Mike Jones could change his position. Even if all these guys come back, like Micah Bakersfield, and even if Bud Strong turns out to be a great linebacker, Damone Clark has a better year, and Anton Sampe and Josh White can keep developing. The key is Mike Jones. Can this guy come in and start and help LSU be an athletic linebacker core again? I think he can. I saw him at Clemson. He's he's got some great talent. They had a lot, a lot, a lot of talent at linebacker at Clemson. And there's another kid coming in that this linebacker core really they're going to need his help immediately for depth and special teams. But he's one of the top linebackers in the country out of Dematha High School in Maryland. Greg Penn. Greg is about six one, about two twenty. Runs about a four five nine forty. Very clonable of a Patrick Queen. I think LSU saw a lot of Patrick Queen and Greg Penn. Greg Penn the third. Um, so Greg comes in in the fall. Mike Jones Jr. will be uh, ready for the fall. Uh, but that round, and then there's Philip Webb, who was hurt last year. More of a buck linebacker. They're trying to have him play linebacker. About six four, about two twenty five from Georgia. Was Class 5A Player of the Year in the Atlanta area. Was a big-time recruit, but missed last year because he was hurt. Had three tackles in the spring game. Had a good spring. Phillip Webb needs to exert his, his claim there to get reps because he's highly recruited and didn't really contribute, like I said, as a true freshman, but has all the talent in the world. And then we've got some guys 
Uh, another guy they're going to try and make a linebacker this year or a buck, it depends on how the depth is on the team, but Xavier Carter from Atlanta, Georgia, same high school as Arden Key, by the way, uh, six foot five, 220 pounds, runs about a 4'6", 40. More ideal to be a buck linebacker, probably going to end up being about 240 when he's done. But Xavier Carter might stay at the regular linebacker position. But if all these guys pan out and Micah Bakersfield comes back and Bug Strong pans out, Sam Pay pans out, Josh White pans out, Mike Jones and Greg Penn, if all these guys pan out and they don't have any injuries, then Xavier Carter will be able to move again to Buck linebacker and they'll be really deep there with Savion Jones coming in and Landon Jackson and all those guys with a great, great defensive end. Core with Ollie Gay, um, Andre Anthony. So, linebacking core is a big question mark. There's talent there. Again, they can't have any injuries. And let me mention some walk-ons because I'm big on these walk-ons that, that, that stick around and work hard. But there's some walk-on linebackers on this LSU football team that gonna, they're going to play special teams. And if there's injuries, they, they're going to get a chance to play. The first guy is Hunter Foss uh, from Jesuit High School in New Orleans. He's been around for three years. He's on the national championship team in 219. But Hunter is six foot tall, about 225 pounds, just a great kid. Uh, has played some special teams, home games in the past. There's Aaron Benfield, who's from uh, E.D. White and Thibodeau. Uh, Aaron um, is about six foot tall, about 225, very strong kid. This will be his junior year was on the national championship team. Uh, Aaron is, uh, you know, is a guy that come in and play special teams, uh, kickoff team, punt return, uh, could get some time. And then there's also a kid by the name of Sloan Wright. Uh, this will be Sloan's second year from St. Thomas Moore in Lafayette. Six foot one, 235, 236 pounds. Uh, Sloan got some reps in the spring game. And here's a kid that, that can get on the field and play special teams. That's Kind of how you earn your way on the, to the field is play special teams. Uh, I could see that happening for some home games this year uh, for him and Hunter and Aaron Benfield. Those three guys that have put in the work as walk-ons and leaders. And I think it's very important to mention these walk-ons, how much they mean to the team and the, and the reps they put in for the team. We're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about defensive backs for the LSU football team for this upcoming season for 221, long snappers and kickers, and also we'll talk about the Kim Mulkey hire from Baylor with the women's basketball program at LSU. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scout and Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We're going to talk about the defensive backfield for LSU for the fall season. We just talked about the linebacking core, which has a chance to be very talented. It's just they can't have many injuries, and everybody needs to reach their potential. Uh, defensive back, I think, is really strong this year. I think it was a weak link in 220. It was a combination of injuries, injuries, um, some guys not really reaching their potential, and um, just really guys playing out of poten out of position because of injuries last year. You know, Derek Stingley was hurt last year, was never never fully a hundred percent. You know, Eli Ricks was fighting injuries every week. You had a lot of injuries there. You had you know, uh, Harris was coming back from a knee injury the year before. Cordell Flott was struggling in the slot. Darren Evans was struggling, the nickel state, state transfer. He was struggling getting a, acclimated to this level of play. And the team really didn't have a great safety. They didn't have a great strong or free safety on the team. Uh, you know, they played Cameron Lewis some. He was a great kid, but just not a super talent player. Um, and, and, I, and kudos to him sticking around, getting his degree, by the way, from Wasman High School. Solid player. Uh, but this year will have more talent at safety. Still unknown how good they're go they're going to be at safety. They do have more talent, and they have a lot of talent at corner now. I'm really really impressed with Dwight McGuthrin. 
McLaughlin, excuse me, Dwight McLaughlin, a, a true sophomore from Houston, Texas. About 6'2", about 185 pounds. I thought he was phenomenal in the spring game. And all spring, he had a great spring. Eli Ricks missed the spring game for the fans, but he uh, missed the whole spring because of, it, of surgery. He'll be back for fall. I thought he was phenomenal last year. Had three pick sixes on the season. Um, Derek Stingley, obviously, is a great player. We need to get him back to the way he was as a freshman. Last year, he didn't have one interception, and he missed a lot of the season last year. So LSU needs the old Derek Stingley back. Eli Ricks healthy. And Dwight McLaughlin has really shown that he's at third corner, and he's got a chance to be special. Um, Radarius Jones, I thought, had a great spring from Mississippi. From Horn Lake, he was a quarterback in high school, had to learn how to play DB. A lot of people were kind of giving up on, you know, his ability because he didn't play the first two years. So this is redshirt sophomore year, and he had a great spring game, too. Had an interception. He's tall, about 6'2", about 185 now. He came in about 160. But Radarius Jones has a lot of talent, and it, it's, you're starting to see it, which is really good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the kid. I'm happy for LSU coaches. Coach Corey Raymond seeing the upside in this kid. So you really have four really, really good corners, and you need about six. The fifth corner is Cordell Flott, which I think he'll be better in the slot now that now that he's not one of the main three corners. Um, Cordell Flott will not be asked to guard the number one or number two receivers now, which is something Stingley and Ricks can do, and even Dwight McLaughlin. And so that takes a lot of pressure off of Flott probably being manned up on the fourth best receiver or the third best receiver on the other team. I think Darren Evans improved a little bit, the transfer from Nickel State, as the sixth corner. And the seventh corner that you need because of injuries is a true freshman from Pensacola High School in Florida, Demarius McGahey. He's about 6'1", about 185. They list him at 175. He's about 185 now. Runs a 4-5, was committed to Tennessee for several months until they had their debacle and fired their coach, Pruitt. And then McGahee came to LSU in the end and signed with LSU. So they really got more talent. I mean, LSU basically had two cornerbacks by the Ole Miss game. I mean, it was just – they didn't have enough players. Um, even the Florida game, they only had about three corners. Now, safety. Speaking of corner, Jay Ward moved to safety in the spring – and um, it was a great move, but, again, they didn't play anybody, so we can't judge him on, you know, how good is he going to be playing against other SEC teams at safety. We're going to come back. We're going to take a break, talk about safeties, and we're going to start with Jay Ward and some of the other safeties on this team for the 2021 season for LSU football. We'll be right back. Looking for a used car? Harvey Artos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Today we're talking about our topic is LSU's linebackers, which we covered earlier, and defensive backs. We talked about cornerbacks. This segment we're going to talk about safeties. And later in the show, we're going to talk about the, the hire of Kim Mulkey for women's basketball at LSU. What a hire, man. Whew. Scott Woodward, Scott Woodward hit a home run getting uh, Kim to lead Baylor after three national championships and winning almost 80% of her games. One of the great coaches. She is the Nick Saban of women's basketball to me. And they just got the, the coach that can get anybody to play for her. Everybody's going to want to play for Kim Mulkey. And that's why she won at Baylor. I mean, she's a heck of a coach. Recruiter, developer, game day coach, she's got it all. And I think uh, we'll talk about that later. But let's continue with LSU safeties. Jay Ward was moved from corner to safety to, to kind of tinker to see if he could do that in the spring for LSU. He had a good spring. Um, had a good spring game. Jay's not your typical safety, though. He's not, he's not even 190 pounds. He's about six foot one, about 180. So he's a little on the light side for a safety in the league. But 
if LSU's corners all continue to be strong, especially Radarius Jones and Darren Evans, if Darren Evans and Radarius Jones show they can play at this level, then you might can move Jay Ward back to corner, especially if Sage Ryan and Derek Davis turn out to be great players. And Todd Harris ends up being a great safety where I thought he belonged the whole time as a safety, not a corner. And in Jordan Tolls. So, I mean, you it might not be permanent with Jay Ward being at a safety position, but at least he learned the position if there's an injury. And if you move Jay back to corner, oh, my goodness, this is the best cornerback position in the SEC. He went from being the worst position to the best if Jay Ward ends up being a corner again. That would give LSU basically eight corners for the season and five possible pro prospects. But let's talk about safeties. There's a lot of unknowns going into the 221 season on who's going to start at strong safety, who's going to start at free safety. And I think it's going to be a process. I don't think you're going to really see a certain free safety for the whole year or strong. I hope you do after fall practice. It could be many combinations here. So if Jay Ward stays a safety and stays at free safety, then he's the free safety if that happens. And then it'll be come down to who's going to be the strong safety. Will it be Sage Ryan, who's phenomenal, coming in from Lafayette Christian High School? Not very big, about five, ten and a half, about 200 pounds, but super strong and super tough. I think he's the Devin White of safeties. So if Sage Ryan takes that strong safety spot, that'll solve all problems. If he struggles for some reason for the jump to the SEC from high school, then there might be a, a competition between him and Derek Davis, Todd Harris, you know, those guys. It's just going to be maybe a, a, a rotation. In the, in the safety, back up at free safety, if Jordan Tolls reaches his potential from Maryland, the true sophomore, if he ends up becoming everything they thought he would be, he's, he was one of the top five safeties in the country when they signed him a year ago. If Jordan Tolls ends up being a phenomenal free safety again, then Jay Ward can go back to corner. And then backing him up could be Derek Davis or Todd Harris. And then Cameron Lewis. And you also have as a strong safety coming in as incoming freshman from Catholic a point could be central, Matthew Langwa. Matthew would be a great strong safety for LSU, six foot one ninety again. I don't know if he'll struggle in coverage and struggle in scheme or struggle at this level right away. Not everybody comes in and becomes a star day one when you play in the SEC. It's kind of hard to gauge if how long it's going to take these guys to really become great safeties. And again, Sage Ryan, I'm, the, I'm his biggest fan. I think he's a phenomenal player. I just I hope he can adjust at this level, uh, not being overly big. And again, I compare him to Devin White because Devin White's 5'11", about 240. He wasn't the biggest guy, but man, he's super strong and super intimidating. He's just He knows the game, and that's what Sage Ryan is. Sage knows the game. And I don't think he will struggle. And I'm going to just throw this out. LSU has one scholarship left. And I don't have any information on this. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just thinking it could, it could, it could happen. Sean Preston is at Mississippi State right now as a start in safety from St. James High School in Louisiana. Sean's a true sophomore who had 60 tackles. He's a future high draft pick for the NFL. Sean Preston's a stud. His little brother, Chaz Preston, who's a current senior coming up at St. James High School, to me, is one of the top two players in Louisiana for the 222 class. Sean Preston could leave Mississippi State and go anywhere because they just passed the rule that you can transfer without sitting out. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but Chaz Preston's leaning to commit to LSU. And I know families, mom and dads, that want to see their kids play in one state, go to one game on one weekend, one Saturday. 
and it wasn't. It would not shock me if Sean Preston, who's a sophomore at Mississippi State, and a starter at safety in one of the best in the country, ends up at LSU. Sean would start immediately at LSU at strong safety for 221, and that would solve all problems. Then you wouldn't have to rush Sage Ryan into starting. You wouldn't have to rush Matthew Langwall to play. You wouldn't have to rush Derek Davis from Pennsylvania. He's going to be a great player, whether it's strong or free safety. And you don't have to rush Jordan Tolles. But right now, they're, they've got a lot of question marks there. And I think LSU would love to put Jay Ward back at corner so they're deep at corner. Because it takes six corners to get through a season, maybe even seven. That would be the ideal thing to happen. And that's what I would do. If Sean Preston wants, if he wants to leave Mississippi State and his brother Chaz is going to LSU to play with his brother on the same team for two or three years, if I'm LSU, I give that last scholarship to him. Because they need a safety right now. They really do. And they need a guy that can come in and start. Sean Preston would be phenomenal day one. And it makes sense. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the long snappers and also our kickers at LSU, led by Cade York. We're going to take a break and be right back. So, hey, guys, just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, honest people, tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. And we're talking about the LSU linebackers today, our topic, and also defensive backs for 221 season. In this segment, we're going to talk about the long snappers and the kickers. And then we'll talk about the hiring of Kim Mulkey from Baylor for the women's basketball program at LSU, which is gigantic. I don't want to leave out a kid. And he missed last year because he was hurt. And he might play some safety this year in some corner, depending on where LSU wants him. Lloyd Cole, forgot to mention him in the last segment, from Parkway High School in Bossier City. Lloyd Cole, six foot 205, and actually as a junior walk-on, got a lot of playing time during the football season. And actually 2019, the year they won the national championship. He missed 220 with an injury. He'll be a redshirt senior in 221, and again, can move to safety. Might be that sleeper that we don't really talk about a lot, but has shown flashes of brilliance as a walk-on. Like I said, in 19, he played a lot. 18, he played. He was a transfer from Grambling College, where he spent his first two years. We're going to go ahead and talk about long snappers and kickers this segment. Kickers, LSU has the best kicker in college football next year in Cade York. I'm sure there's some other talented kickers out there, but I don't know of any kickers who kick 55-yard field goals in the fog and can't even see the goalpost, and all he can do is aim with his hand and his foot. That is the best kick I've ever seen in my life with the game on the line, on the road, at Florida, in the fog where people could not even see in front of them in the stands. He makes his kick. One of the longest field goals in the history of LSU on the road to win the game, which helped LSU finish out strong with Ole Miss. Cade York is phenomenal. Cade York will be a starter in the NFL. It'll be LSU's first kicker to start in the NFL in years. Since I think Tommy Davis may be back in the 70s and 60s with the 49ers. LSU's in great hands with Cade York. He's only a junior, and thank God kickers don't go in the first, second, or third round, so he'll be back for another two years. Backing him up is Catholic high grad Preston Stafford, who's got a great leg. He's very he's money from zero to 42, 43 yards. Uh, really good kid, been on the LSU team now three years. Avery Atkins can also kick, the kickoff specialist, also fu- uh, fighting to be the starting punter. 
Avery Atkins has a strong leg, could, can kick him 50 yards in pretty, pretty easily. I mean, he's obviously a great kicker on kickoffs. And let's talk about long snappers. Quentin Skinner is LSU starting long snapper from Beaufort, Georgia. Uh, the third high school player from the – actually, this is, I think, 13 or 14 years in a row. LSU's had a long snapper from the same high school 14 years in a row. The Ferguson brothers were also – from the same high school as Quentin Skinner. Quentin Skinner had a quietly a good year last year. Nobody talked about him. And that's good because he didn't have any mistakes. <laughs> no baubles. He's done a great job. And backing him up is Max Peterson from Massachusetts. Jonathan Ferguson, who's also a true freshman from California. And transfer from Kansas. Redshirt freshman Emery Dugar from Catholic High Baton Rouge. So LSU's pretty set special team-wise. They're going to have a great kicker, punter, and long snapper. The team is set. They've got some question marks at safety going into the season and maybe a little bit at linebacker, but I think it'll work out if they don't have any injuries. And my final statement on this LSU team is I'm going to give my record for LSU for 221. I'm going to put them at 10-2. and two. And I really believe, depending on the advancement, and I believe Max Johnson will be the quarterback at the end of the day. And I think Nussmeyer will be the backup eventually. I think these two guys will be phenomenal for LSU for years to come. And then Walker Howard will come in and take over after they leave. But Max Johnson has a chance to be a pro player after in the, after two more years, after his junior year. Nussmeyer will probably be a guy that never sees his senior season at LSU. And the same with Walker Howard, who's still in high school at St. Thomas More, committed to LSU for a 222 class. But I think LSU could even do better than 10-2. and two. If they can get strong at safety and linebacker, I really believe this team could be phenomenal. Uh, Alabama is the team to beat because of their confidence, and you know they got great recruits, and they just put new names and numbers on the team. This, the roster is just it just rotates guys in and out. But Alabama, to me, is not as strong as they were, even though they're one of the top two teams in the country. But I would put LSU in the top five right now, going into preseason. In my opinion, I think LSU talent-wise is the fifth best team going into the season in the college in the college football talent pool. I'm not talking about just rankings. And I think LSU can end up being in that top four at the end of the day if things go right. And if all these kids return from the summer, if they don't have any problems with anybody flunking out or anybody getting in trouble or anything, if they can return all these kids – if they can keep these guys together, come September, this could be a special team. And I say that because there's always attrition over the summer, and hopefully it's not attrition to where it's guys you want to come back. And that's the key for Orgeron and his staff is to keep these guys together. Keep these guys together, and I think they could be a special unit, special team, offense and defense and special teams. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, let's talk about how important the hiring of Kim Mulkey was to women's basketball in the University of Louisiana State here in Baton Rouge. We'll be right back. Parents, are you looking for advice on getting your high school athlete recruited by the right college? Lee Brakeen is your answer. Lee has been doing it for over 30 years. He knows the ropes, and more importantly, he knows the people. Lee offers turnkey service from evaluation, creating highlight tapes in the correct format, and complete guidelines for effective communication with the schools. No matter the sport, girl or boy, no matter what grade your child is in, let Lee Brakeen help match your child to the right college fit. Go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com, and get connected today. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. 
I think the biggest hire in the history of uh, athletics for the for for the women's athletics for LSU was Kim Mulkey yesterday. Um, I don't details haven't come out. They'll probably come out after the show comes out, but you know, there's no details yet. I'm sure it'll all come out soon about the money that was agreed on. You know, how many years the contract is, you know, bonuses involved and all that. But I'm going to tell you right now, I think Kim Mulkey wanted to be in Baton Rouge. And that says a lot because she was at Baylor and won three national championships. She was on top of the women's basketball world. And she's thought of as, like Nick Saban for, for football, she's the Nick Saban of women's basketball. Nobody recruits better than Kim Mulkey. Nobody develops better than Kim Mulkey. Nobody coaches in game better than Kim Mulkey in women's basketball. LSU will be a national champion program in women's basketball soon under Kim Mulkey. And I, you got to give your hat off to Scott Woodward, the athletic director at LSU. I'm sure he went after and recruited her, but I know you have to want to come to LSU to leave a job like Baylor where you're on top of the world making $2.7 million a year. And it wouldn't shock me when the financial agreement comes out and the contract comes out that it was probably maybe lower than what she makes. It's not always about money. Sometimes it's about where you want to be and coming back home to Louisiana. She's from Tickfall, Louisiana, Hammond, Louisiana, played at Louisiana Tech. We all know the story in Ruston. Was an All-American point guard. I would, look, I want to say this to the listeners, and like a lot of listeners, the first women's basketball game I've ever watched in my life as a kid for college was Louisiana Tech. And the, my favorite player in, the, in the, my favorite first game, it was the first game I'd ever seen for women's basketball, was Kim Mulkey playing point guard for Louisiana Tech. And I thought she was incredible with that basketball. If you have a chance to go Google Kim Mulkey and watch film on her as a player, my goodness, she was good. She was unbelievable as a leader, and she could – Man, that basketball was like a part of an extension of her hand. And as a kid, she was she was my favorite women's basketball player because it was the first game I'd ever saw, and Louisiana Tech was dominating back then. I mean, they were the team to beat before even Tennessee until Pat Summit came around and UConn started winning, and Tech didn't dominate the college basket world for women's basketball. But, man, when Kim Mulkey was there, she that those teams were incredible. And she was one of the main reasons the Tech program became what it became. But her three national championships at Baylor and what she's done as a coach, if you're not excited over this, you'll never be. Her getting the head basketball job, leaving Baylor to come to LSU, which for the last 10 years um, they just haven't had great seasons. You know, and they haven't had great recruiting classes. That will change overnight. I would not be shocked if, if Kim Mulkey gets about seven transfers in the next four to five weeks that are incredible players. That are some of the best players in the country. That They're going to want to play for her, for Kim Mulkey, and for LSU. A-plus job by Scott Woodward, the athletic director for LSU, A+. Plus. Probably the biggest hire in women's basketball, definitely in women's basketball history outside of Sue Gunner. And I say Sue Gunner, the late Sue Gunner brought basically the, the basketball to women's basketball at LSU. She was the first to really start the winning process for LSU. But it's incredible what is going to happen in the next few months. I think LSU women's basketball are going to be an incredible program the first year. Kim Mulkey's not into rebuilding, and, re and she's not into projecting. She's <laughs> she don't like to lose. 
They'll win right away. Scary. Scary what she's going to do at LSU basketball for women's basketball. And I'm excited for, for Baton Rouge. I'm excited for the program. I'm excited for the fans. I mean, you just hired the Nick Saban of women's basketball. Take that in. I mean, you, 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 just, you just hired someone that's going to bring national championships to the, the, the program. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of how many. I hope everybody enjoyed the show today. Um, talking about LSU linebackers and defensive backs, long snappers, kickers, and also Kim Mulkey. I'm sure everybody has an opinion today on, on a thousand podcasts and news, news outlets. And, and I'm going to uh, do my best to get Coach Mulkey to come on our show in the coming weeks. Um, love, love hearing her interviewed. Love how she's so open and, and blunt. And she's, she's, she's tough and, and just knows the game and just very real. You know, she keeps it real. And I like that in people. Kim Mulkey, she, she speaks her mind. Uh, but we'll see everybody on Wednesday and also on this Friday. We'll have a guest on Friday and this Wednesday. And go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com. Check out our stories on different high schools by Jace Lejeune and also – Go ahead and pre-order your magazine. It's going to be our 25th year to put out our preview magazine come September. 25 years. Louisiana Football Magazine. Go to LAFootballMagazine.com. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brickeen.